Hello everyone. I'm so grateful to meet together with all of you. Today, I would like to share the words of God from the book of Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 up to verse 9, and I will read. Numbers chapter 21, uh, verse 4 to verse 9. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the source of people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spoke against Moses, against God, and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of uh, Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul roeth the, this right bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpent among the people, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray our uh, Pray unto the Lord and take away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent. And, and the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall be and it shall come and it shall come to pass that everyone that is is beat is beaten when he looketh upon it shall live. Uh, I'm so happy for this time also as we are sharing the words of God. You know, everyone, one thing which is very clear is that there is no one who is able to do away with darkness. We, we see from the book of Genesis chapter 1, the earth was without form, it was void and in darkness. We don't know how long this earth was in this state. We don't know how long it was in this darkness. But one thing we know is that the earth was not having power to come out of this darkness by itself. For example, in this room, if we can switch off all the lights and I bring a machine gun, everyone, do you think I'm able to remove all the darkness? How about if I bring a very sharp sword and I start cutting uh, the darkness. Is it possible? No. Yeah, why? Because there is only one way to remove darkness. That is the, by the way of light. Without light, darkness cannot help but prevail continually. Many people, the, many people are trying to remove darkness, worries, pain in their lives by themselves. But one thing which is very sure is that it is not possible. Why? Because it is, we don't have capability to do away with pain in our life. We don't have capability to remove sin in our heart. We are not able to do anything by ourselves. God has not given us power to be able to remove all these things in our lives. That's why when the children of Israel were in Egypt, when they were there, even though they would think again and again how they can come out of Egypt by themselves, it was not within their ability. Why? They came to Egypt not because they were willing, but God led them to Egypt. That's why as they were living in Egypt, for them to come out of Egypt, it would not be out of their own power. That's why even though they can go and bring all the Syrian army, all the Ammonites, all the Moabites, all the all other nations and come together and join and try to fight against the Egyptians, it would, they would not conquer them. They, even though they could conquer them, they didn't have any ability to come out of Egypt by themselves. That's why it had to, bring, to take the hand of God for them to come out of Egypt. You see, many people are thinking like this in their heart. Uh, if I try hard, if I try this one more time, I can stop, I can quit doing the drugs. If I can try once more, I can straighten my life. I can be happy if I try one more, one more time. It is not like that. The power to change our life is not given unto us uh, as a human being. The children of Israel, as I have told you, they cannot come out of Egypt by their own power, by their own will, by their own ability. In the Bible, we had the man who had infirmity for 38 years. We know he has stayed in this state. Uh, don't you think that he really wanted to come out of, uh, out of this state? 
Being sick for 38 years, it's a long time. I know in his heart, he also had a heart willing to come out of this, uh, this sickness. But also that, even though he could try to enter to the pool of Bethsaida, it was not possible for him to come out of this sickness by himself. You know, that's why when Jesus Christ came to him, what he says is that, I got no man, Lord, to put me into this pool. You, all, I know all people, the parents in the beginning tried to come and help him. The friends in the beginning tried to come and help him. But it was not within their ability to come out of them, out of this situation by himself. That's why in our life we have to know one thing. It is not that power was given unto us, but all power was given unto Jesus. If you see the book of Isaiah chapter 53, which I see this, Isaiah chapter 53, Verse 6, Isaiah 53, verse 6, is saying like this. All, uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have read on him the iniquity of us all. Even the work of washing away sin, God never gave it to any human being. God have taken, have gone and gathered all our sin and he have placed it unto Jesus Christ. Why? Because he knows very well that man doesn't have power to come out of sin by himself. You know, all of us, when we were born, what the Bible says is that we were born having sin in our heart. It is not that we have done anything to become sinners, but the fact that we are seed of Adam, we were born having sin in us already. The Bible in the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 14, is saying that we were sold under sin. That's why if you have to come out of sin, it is not within our... A slave can never buy himself. A slave can never redeem him or herself. That's why we really need someone who is without, who is outside, to come and redeem us. From the Bible, when we see all the stories of Bible, it's speaking about the redemption that we have received from Jesus Christ. The story of, the, of John chapter 2, there is no wine. That's why Jesus must come and provide wine for them. In the book of John chapter 4, also we saw that the Samaritan woman had no husband. That's why Jesus Christ had to, be, to come and become the husband to her. In John chapter 5, we saw there is man with the infirmity for 38 years. Even this man, he cannot come out of this. He really needs someone who is a savior, who is outside, to come and help him. John chapter 8, the Pharisees, the law, was condemning this woman who was caught in very act of adultery. That's why by herself, she was not able to come out of this situation by herself. That's why Jesus Christ must become her savior. When we see all our life, this story is the first story that I have mentioned. They are speaking about our story. This is our story. This is our life. We can never do anything by our own ability, especially the way of sin. Sin, we never did anything to become sinners. Neither can we ever do anything to become holy, righteous, and perfect. All the work of sin was committed into the hands of Jesus. That's why God have not told uh, anyone, Hey, Peterson, you must wash away your sin. Why? Because God knows that I have a zeal, I have a will, but I don't have power to overcome sin from, uh, in my heart. Sin is more powerful than us. That's why no matter how much we try to fight with the sin, that's how we, then even though we pray overnight, we go for prayers, all this can overwash away our sin. That's why God, in the book of John chapter 2, from verse 13 to verse 17, is explaining when Jesus came to the temple. Inside the temple, they had brought the cows, they had brought the dove, and also, and also the sheep. What is their work? All these are clean animals because in the temple, before anything entered, there was a watchman who was set at the gate to do what? To prevent all the unclean, unclean things to, from coming inside. That means the animals which were in the temple that time, they were all clean animals. But when Jesus Christ came, he was really uncomfortable and he removed them all out. Why? Because once Jesus Christ has come, these animals, it is true. They are given for giving sacrifice before God. But the problem is, these animals, they are not sufficient. They are not able to take away sin. 
That's why when Jesus Christ had come to the temple, he had removed everything and he had remained inside the temple by himself. Why? Because Jesus Christ was the enough, was the exact required uh, lamb of God that God had given to us to give before God for the sake of sin. You know, just as I said, we were sold under sin. That's why God to us, he had given us Jesus who had power to come and redeem us. It is not that we have to try by ourselves anymore after Jesus Christ has come, but it is that we have to take what God has given unto us as offering for the sake of sin. You know, in the book of, uh, I will read the book of Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 10 verse 1, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 is saying, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, uh, of the things can, uh, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make come us unto, uh, they are, they are unto perfect. You know, the sacrifice that, uh, the law that God had given unto us, the law that he had given to the children of Israel, the law didn't have power to also wash away sin. Many people were trying to keep the law. That's why also they were trying to give offering. But what the Bible is saying is this. The law itself, it was a shadow of the things to come and not, a, not the very image of the things. The law was not really the sure thing, but it was just a shadow, you know. And that the law, there was sacrifices which were given. That means what? Even these sacrifices, they were just shadows that those sacrifices also could not take away sin. If you see verse 11, John chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11, what the Bible is saying is this. And every priest started daily ministering and offering often time the same sacrifice which can never take away sin. Even the sacrifices, the animals which were in the temple in the book of John chapter 2, they were brought for giving offering. But what the Bible is saying here, even though they would give those sacrifices, those animals, they were not enough to take away the sin from their hearts. That's why the true offering of God is spoken in the book of John chapter 1 verse 29. What the Bible is saying is that, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The sure offering of God that have power to take away sin from this world was Jesus Christ. That's why in the book of Isaiah where we read, it was saying, like, Isaiah 53 verse 6, it is said like this, God have read on him the sin of us all. If God have taken away, uh, he have taken our sin and read uh, them on the back of Jesus Christ. Now who have the sin? Yeah, it is true. Jesus Christ is possessing all our sin. That's why Jesus Christ is the sure and enough offering before God to take away sin. If we see from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 21, 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 21, what God is saying is this, For he have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God have taken away our sin and have praised it unto Jesus. You know, Jesus Christ is not seed of Adam. Jesus Christ was conceived through the Holy Spirit. That means he didn't have sin. Why? Because Holy Spirit is very holy. Holy means what? Without any sin. Jesus Christ never had sin. But who are we? We are the seed of Adam. From Adam, without us doing anything, we all received sin and we became sinners. But now what God has said is that he has taken the sin of us and have read it on the back of Jesus Christ. That's why this Jesus Christ, who was holy, has become sinner because of us. That Jesus, <clears throat> what we read in the book of 2 Corinthians, is, uh, verse 21, is this, For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin? Yeah, Jesus Christ never knew sin. That we might be the righteousness of God in him. Then after God has taken away the sin of us all and read it unto Jesus, what did we remain? Jesus Christ became the sinner and we became the righteous. That's why 
the work of washing away our sin was not committed unto us. Why? Because if we try to wash away our sin, we cannot keep them all. We are not able even to remember them all. We are not able to follow them all. You know? That's why God who knew, who is Alpha and Omega, who knows the beginning and the end, he had ability, he had power to take away our sin and commit it unto Jesus. And that's why that Jesus became a sinner and he was raised and he was uh, crucified on the cross. Today we read from the book of John, uh, uh, Numbers chapter 21. What the Bible says is that the children of Israel were departing away from Egypt and they came to Mount Hall. From there, they were compassing, but their hearts became very tired and they could not, uh, they started complaining against God and against Moses. The time God sent unto them, fiery serpent. And this fiery serpent, when they beat them, they would do what? They would die. The team, they thought, ah, oh, what shall we do? That's why they came to Moses. Moses, Moses, please, we sinned against God. We spoke against you and also against God. Please ask from God to remove this serpent away from us. But that time, Moses went before God, and what God told him is this. Hey, go down there and make a bronzing serpent and set it on a pole. And whenever anyone who is being beat when he uh, looks at the pole, at the bruised serpent which have been put on a pole, shall be well, shall live again. The time Moses made as God had instructed him. Now, what do you think? If I have been beat by, by the fiery serpent here, then I cut my hand from here. Do you think I'm going to live or I'm going to die? Live? I don't think so. This was the judgment of God. That's why when they were being beat, it, even though I used the best medicine, even though I cut my hand, still I'll die. Why? Because cutting the hand was not the way that God had given unto them. Even though God had brought the fiery serpent, also that God had said through Moses to prepare a frozen serpent. What was the solution after you have been beat? Is it to cut the hand or to look at the frozen serpent? Yeah, looking at the frozen serpent. That was the condition, you know. It is God who brought the fiery serpent, and it was the work of God to save them from the fiery serpent. No matter how much the Israelites could try to come out of this uh, poison or this, uh, this, this venom from this fiery serpent, it was no support. It will, it will not happen to them. Their ways, their methods, their functional uh, functions, it would not work for this. Why? It was for God to bring solution unto them. You know, God allowed sin to come into the world through one man, Adam. We became victims of sin without our knowledge, without our will. It is not that we have done anything to become sinners. No. It is that Adam have committed sin and it have crossed over even unto us. That's why God has not given us power to overcome what? To overcome uh, the sin by ourselves. Just like the way the Egyptians, uh, the Israelites could not overcome the power of venom by themselves. The time God has given them frozen bro serpent and set it on a pole. Even to us, God has prepared for our salvation. But one strange thing is that not through us, not through our effort, not through our works, but through the work of God. What does the Bible say in the book of John chapter 3, verse 14? John chapter 3, verse 14. Verse 14 is saying, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Like the same way the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness, God have given them frozen serpent. Even us today, God have given us uh, Jesus Christ. What the Bible is saying that if you only believe, it is not if you only do well. It is not if I work diligently. It is not if I work for God seriously that I can have eternal life. God is saying, whoever believes in Jesus, what is to believe in Jesus? It is to believe in the work that he has accomplished in our behalf. 
It is true. It is us who are supposed to be crucified because it is us who have committed sin. It is us who are supposed to die. But God, in our behalf, he has transferred this, all these uh, responsibilities unto Jesus. And that Jesus had to be set on the pole. Then when we believe in the work of Jesus Christ, just like the way the people in the wilderness, when they were being beat, it doesn't matter how many uh, serpent, uh, the bronzen serpent have beat them. If only they could look upon the bronzen serpent on the pole, all of them, they could live. Even to us today, what is God saying to us? If you only believe in Jesus Christ, who have died on that cross for our sin, then surely we can have eternal life. Many people are trying to go to church diligently. They are trying to give tithe diligently. They are trying to give that and that sacrifices for the sake of sin. But all this is not sufficient for washing away our sin. What the Bible is saying is this in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23. Romans, chapter 3, verse 33, uh, 23, is saying like this. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah, all of us have sinned. Who among you have not sinned? All of us have sinned, just like the children of Israel. All of them, they complained against Moses and also against God. That's why they, have, they were given what? Bruising serpent. You know, we unwillingly, we, because we are children of Adam, we have all sinned without us doing anything. We are counted as sinners, you know. But one amazing thing is this. Even though we have become sinners without us doing anything, people today are trained to do something to wash away their sin. But now here he's saying, for all have sinned. Yeah, we have all sinned. And have come we have fallen short of the glory of God. But what does verse 24 say? Verse 24 is saying, being justified free by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus here. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. How are we being justified? What have we done? It is true we have sinned, but now verse 24, what does it say? What have we done? We have done, a, we have done total nothing. And what he's saying? Being justified freely by, uh, through the, uh, by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I told you, we were sold under sin. But now, if we have to become, our, we were sold under sin, that means we became the slaves of sin, right? If then we have to be free from sin, then we have to be redeemed. You know, that's why the Bible is saying here, we have received redemption by grace. We have not done anything. Jesus Christ has become a ram who was given to pay for our sin. The ram was the money, was the ransom, which was ready now to pay for all our sin. That's why we have been justified. What is being justified? This means you have been made righteous, freely, by his grace, without any works, without your prayers, without your reading Bible, without your going to church, without your effort, without anything. We have received the redemption inside Jesus Christ. That's why all of you who are viewing me, one thing you have to know is that it is not of works. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9. <clears throat> what the Bible is saying is this. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, rest any man should be host. For by grace we have been saved. It is grace. It is no works. There are no works here. There is no any ability, there is no any effort, there is no good behavior, there is no bad behavior here inquire, inquired. It is all free gift. It's by grace, no works. You know, the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, it was very perfect. 
it would wash away, it was enough to wash away all our sin, it was enough to take away all our diseases, it was enough to take away all our blemishes, all our filthiness. It was totally complete. You know, before Jesus died, what he said is, it is finished. What is finished? The work that he had come to do in this world. He had come to wash away our sin. As you know, in the book of Isaiah, he's saying that through his stripes, we are healed. It was very easy for them to kill Jesus Christ, even without beating him. When Pharaoh, uh, when pirates gave the, 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 like, the permission for them to crucify, they would have taken the gun and shoot him immediately, right? But for us to be healed, he had to be beaten, so that through his stripes, we can also be freed from all our diseases. The work of Jesus Christ was very, very enough. That's why Jesus Christ, when he met with the woman who was caught in very act of adultery, he told her, neither do I condemn you. Why can he not condemn him? You know, her, because the law was condemning her, right? But why is Jesus not able to condemn her? As we have been listening to the book of John, we heard that it is because also her sin was already read at the back of Jesus Christ. All of you, all your sin have been, read, have been read on the back of Jesus Christ. That's why it is doesn't matter. It doesn't care who you are. It doesn't matter. Your past doesn't matter. Your present life doesn't matter. What you are thinking doesn't matter. What matters is what does God say about you now? What God is saying is this. Hey, through Jesus Christ I have taken away all your sin. That's why you are holy. That's why you are perfect. That's why you are righteous. Righteous like who? Holy like who? Perfect like who? Like God. Why? Because the standard of perfection is God. The standard of righteousness is God. The standard of what? Holiness is God. Any other holiness which is not the holiness like that of Jesus Christ, it is not a holiness. When we take the true, uh, the true standard and we believe in God, Truly, we can be happy people. Many are trying to keep the law so that they can be counted righteous. The Bible says like this, even though you keep the whole law, no one who have this flesh can be justified in the sight of God. Why? Because the law, it is not the thing to wash away our sin. Law has no power to wash away our sin. We know the wages of sin is what? Yeah, it is death. And without shedding of blood, there's no remission of what? Yeah, of sin. That means... Death is very much required for washing away, for paying for the sin of the of the to pay for the sin, and also uh, blood is very sufficient is very required for washing away sin. That's why Jesus Christ have died to pay for our sin. He have poured his blood to wash away our sin. That's why through Jesus Christ. It is very perfect for us. It is not that our keeping the law is required for us to be saved. Jesus Christ has prepared everything perfectly. You know the book of John chapter 17 verse 17 what he says? Let us see that. John chapter 17 verse 17 what the Bible says is this. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is the truth. How can we be made holy? How can we be sanctified? Only through one way. Sanctify through them through thy, uh, by your truth. Your word is truth. We can only be sanctified through the truth. What is the truth? The word of God. We can learn the way of sanctification only through the word of God. It is not by any other way. It have never been, the, from the verse, there is no any other way and how can we be that this can be done unto us, you know? Jesus Christ, because he took our part and we took the part of Jesus, what the Bible is saying. Before he have come to us, verse 19 is saying, and, to, and for their sake I sanctified them uh, myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. For us, Jesus Christ has sanctified himself. Sindio, he first sanctified himself, then he gave me his part. Sindio, so I became Jesus. Jesus became me. That's why me, I was supposed to be crucified. That's why Jesus in me, in my behalf, I was crucified. Right, Cindy? 
That's why the way of sanctification is not through any other way. It's very precise. It's very open. It's only by the word of God. The word of God, believing in the word of God, knowing the word of God, that is the only way of sanctification. No, many people are deceived in between here. Oh, if I become good, if I'm diligent, if I'm humble, if I'm kind, then I can receive salvation through the... It is not so. It's not so. If you see Galatians, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, What the Bible is saying is this. Knowing that man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of, of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for, the, for, by, the law, for by the work of the law shall no flesh be justified in his, in his, shall be justified. You see, through the works of the law, no one can be justified. Through our effort, you know, the law requires our works. Senior, if you do this, you're blessed. If you don't do this, you are cast. Right. This means there is our works. That's why the law there is do's and no do's. There are 613 laws. Sindio. Under these 613, you also even don't know them all. But we say that we can keep the law, which is not possible. Even though we keep here, even though we try to work very hard, it will never wash away our sin, you know. Even in the book of uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 21, what the Bible is saying is this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 21. Is the road then against the promise of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, very righteousness should have been by the law. If there would be a law which can give life, if it had been a law given which could have given life, very righteousness should have been by the law. If the law would have washed away, then we could, have been, we could be receiving eternal life through keeping the law. But what the Bible is saying is that uh, if, for, for if there had been a law given which could give life, very righteousness should have been by the law. This means what? There was no law that could have washed away sin. Everyone, if we see from the Bible, it is not that we have to keep the law to be justified. But it is that we should have faith to believe in Jesus Christ. We should have faith in Jesus Christ. What faith should we have? Ah, that Jesus Christ have come on this world to do what? All of us know that Jesus Christ is Savior, right? He had to come and wash away our sin. This is sure. When what do you think? That Jesus Christ came and washed some sin and remained some? That some I should wash? No. It is that Jesus Christ, the faith that we should have is that Jesus Christ have done all the work according to the will of God. That's why through him, we have become righteous. Through him, we have been made holy. Through him, we have become perfected before God and we are perfect as God. That's why there's no more offering which is required for the sake of our sin. There's no more offering that we have to give before God. No more sacrifices. No more uh, efforts. No more zeal for the sake of sin. But it is that we have to believe in what Jesus Christ, God has accomplished through Jesus Christ. Now, when I think how God also washed away my sin without I doing anything, with only through the works of Jesus Christ, my heart is very hopeful. As you are watching this, uh, this sermon, I believe that through this sermon and also through this time as we are listening to the words of God continually because uh, God has given us this time, I hope all of your hearts can be opened and you can allow these words of God to come in your heart. As you know, when you plant the seed, inside this seed, there is, inside there, is, there are roots, there is also leaves, there is stem, 
they are also uh, fruits. But when you look at the seed, you can never see them the same, same way. Inside the word of God, there's everything that is really needed for your life. You see, through Jesus Christ, God wants to change our lives. As we, have been, as we are listening to the word of God, you don't need to worry. How am I going to change by myself? The Samaritan woman, how did she change? What did she do? The man, woman caught in very act of that. What did she do? How about the man who had infirmity for 38 years? What did, she, did he do to be changed? Nothing. They only accepted the word of Jesus in their heart. And this word of Jesus was doing the work of transforming and changing their lives one by one. You can think about it. If I take alcohol, do you think I'm going to be drunk? Oh no, I'm a pastor. How can I be drunk if I take alcohol? Surely I'm going to be, uh, to be drunk. The same, same way, once we listen to the word of God, just like the way alcohol works in the body of man, and he, even though he tries to walk uh, straight, is not possible. He staggers here and there, the same, same way. The word of God has power to change. You know, your zeal can never change you. Your will can never change you, only through the word of God. Today, as we were listening to the word of God through the book of John chapter 9, one thing was very clear. It is not that this man have done anything. It is not that we have done anything for us to go through, to become sinners or to have this and that problem. It is only the work of God. And whose work is to remove and to heal us? It is the work of God also. I hope all of your zeal, all of your work can come to an end and only you can behold and the Lamb of God. You can only look unto Jesus who have been crucified on that cross in your behalf. Just like the way the children of Israel in the wilderness, it doesn't matter how many serpent, fairy serpents have beaten on them. If only they looked upon the bronzen serpent, their life could be, their, their bodies could be healed. Only looking at the bronzen serpent, it had power to overcome the venom in the body of all the Egyptians or Israelites who would be beaten. It is not that they have to use good medicine. It is not that they have to go to the good doctor. It is not that they have to try and this and that way. But it is that they have only to believe unto the, the, unto the word of Moses to look upon the frozen serpent. Everyone, when I think how God is helping us, and when I think how God is going to change Kenya as you are listening to the words of God and you guys, you go and share with other people what you have heard, we believe through the word of God, Kenya can be changed. Not only Kenya, but also our lives one by one can become new. When Jesus Christ comes, he's doing the work of changing. Just like the way he separated when there was great darkness in Genesis chapter 1, the earth could not come out of darkness by itself. By that time, God had sent light. This was not the light of the moon. This was not the light of the stars. This was not the light of the sun. But this light, as we listen from the book of John chapter 1, it was Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came in the earth, which was void, it was in darkness, nothing was happening. When that Jesus Christ came, he was able to change everything beautifully. Even to us, just like this earth, when Jesus Christ comes in us, he's doing the work of changing everything. After the light has come, God have, uh, have brought the earth out of the water. And from that time, God started speaking unto the earth. Let the earth bring forth fruit, uh, the herbs. Let the earth bring trees. Let it bear fruits. And also the earth was being changed beautifully one by one. Return for the earth, God have brought the stars. For the earth, God have brought the moon. And God was making it very beautiful. When we think how God is going to make everything happen, even the animals which were not being seen before, God commanded the earth to bring forth animals. And the elephant came out, and the zebra came out, and the donkey came out from that earth. The same, same way. God is going to create many things from us. And then when he sees the earth, what is he going to say? And God said, it was very good. After he has seen the works that he's going to do in your heart through the, works of, the words of God, God is going to say, it's very good. 
He's going, it is, he's going to be very pleased. And you are going to come out to have to be like a uh, spring of living water. And then many people can come in you and they can drink of the Holy Spirit. They can come into you who you are sick and they can he receive healing. They can receive hope. And you, when this word becomes clear in your heart, you're going to do greater things than those things that Jesus Christ when he was in this world. Everyone, I hope all of you can really believe in the word of God. Pastor said like this, only them whose hearts are empty. I have no man, Lord. I go no husband. I have, we, they go no wine. All people who are going to be in this state, then from that time, God is going to work in them. Not them who are trying to wash away their sin. Not them who are trying to do away with their diseases. Not the ones who are trying to, do, uh, to make their families stable or stand again. All these people, Jesus is not going to work for them. As they were cruising over to the other side of the sea, there was a storm. There was a storm. And the disciples were trying to save the situation. They were trying to remove, to, uh, to remove the water from the boat. They were trying to do this and stabilize the boat. But it will not work. But when Jesus Christ awoke and say, he had only one word to say, peace, be still. And the, uh, the storm could uh, be still, be calm. Through the word of Jesus Christ, that Jesus has power to do everything. It is not that the power was given unto us. Mm -mm. The power was given to Jesus. That's why when we believe and belong to Jesus, then the power of Jesus we can use as if it is ours. The ability of Jesus, we can enjoy it with our hearts. Why? When we are together with Jesus, there is nothing which is impossible with us. There's no sorrows. There are no difficulties, no worries. Why? Because that Jesus has power to do everything. That Jesus will accomplish everything in your life. When I think about how this Jesus is going to work in your life, in my life, in our life and change the whole world through the word of God that we have been we are listening, truly we are going to be happy people. The children of uh, the Israelites, uh, the disciples, they don't need much. Only word of Jesus was totally enough. Only word of Jesus was very would make their hearts very comfortable. When they went to the house of uh, the mother-in-law of Peter. And she was sick. Just because Jesus Christ had come, it was enough for her to stand up again and serve them. When they went to the house of Lazarus, who was dead, when Jesus Christ came, that Jesus could arise Lazarus again. When they went uh, to the house of Zacchaeus, even though he was a tax collector, he was an evil man, when they went to the house of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus could receive salvation, Zacchaeus could serve them, Zacchaeus could serve the poor, and he could also be wrong unto Jesus. All the people who met together with Jesus, no matter who they are, they all would receive change in their lives. When we hope behold unto Jesus, no matter who we are, that Jesus is going to make us happy people. It's going to make us blessed people. It is not that we have to try anymore, but Jesus is going to stay, change our situation. As we have been listening to the book of John chapter 6, we had, ah, it was not a problem whether they have no food or not. If Jesus is there, he can give them enough food and also he could allow them to remain with some 12 basket. Even in our life, it doesn't matter who we are whether we are evil, whether we are dirty, whether we are able, whether we are smart, whether we are stupid, whether we are foolish, it's not a problem. When we meet together with Jesus Christ, just like the way he changed the situation uh, of the 5,000 people who are hungry, even to us, it's going to change all our situations and make us very, very happy people. Jesus Christ, wherever he went, there was great works of Jesus Christ. Even if he visits your heart, is going to do also greater works than that you can imagine. This man who was blind today, as we heard, he never tried to do anything by himself. Even he never tried to read himself to Shiroam. The word of Jesus was having power to read him to Shiroam. Jesus, that word, go and wash in Shiroam, had power. 
the same same way. The one it is finished has power to wash away all our sin. I hope all of you can live a blessed life. Until next time, thank you very much. Thank you.